Hello, this is Pro and Con, and I'm Conrad Edgebeck. We associate a winery with bricks and mortar that is a building in a vineyard, yet winemakers operate in many different ways. My guest today is Steve Byfield, co-owner of what's known as a virtual winery. It's called Narai Cellars, and the name, which is a Southern African dialect, means humility. Steve, where does humility come into winemaking? Not too sure where it comes from. I just, I just uh, really just try to interject a name that, in the that uh, someone describes my, I guess, my nature and my personality. And um, when uh, I picked, it's not the name of, uh, of Narai. Um, knew, of course, you know what it meant. I did the research on that, where it came from, the tribe, and so forth, uh, from Mozambique, Zimbabwe. But uh, when I told my business partner uh, Rod Ingram uh, the name itself, he says, "Well." That's perfect. Um, here we are, and just get some background information. Um, my partners wanted me to originally put my name on the label, and I didn't want to do that. So I wanted something that I could at least grace the label, grace the project that would be more uh, fitting, and that would tell a story. So when I told them the name of the Rye or what it meant, um, they're going, "That's perfect." We're, we've been here trying for months to convince you to put your name on. You put something. You select something that's. Uh, that's fitting up, up your nature and your um, your personality. So it just um, it wasn't anything that I wanted to do um, offhand or um, purposely. It just it just worked out. And sometimes I'm slow in terms of realizing the correlation of things. So is wine making a humbling experience? Uh, for me, yes. And I think for most people, I think for more, most winemakers who are passionate about, who enjoy their jobs and enjoy the whole experience of creating something from, from start to finish, from nature to glass to bottle to marketplace. I think it uh, I think it can very well be a humbling experience and for myself it has very much been more than some of us, but it's been a very uh, eye um, opening and very rewarding experience as such. And yet and yet really to succeed in the wine business, you have to have an ego. You have to have a big ego. You have to let people know who you are and what you're about. You have to be out front all the time. Yes, you. It's 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 part of the, uh, the nature of the game. It's just part of any type of uh, business you might do in commerce and in the free marketplace. You have to uh, put yourself out there, put your product out there, and stand behind it and hope that um, people can can identify it and uh, come back. Sure. Um, now, many people in the wine business. Uh, will choose the easy sell, that is to sell into their own community. Uh, when I started in a, uh, not when I started, it was, it was one company I was with, we had a, a Portuguese driver and he absolutely controlled the entire Portuguese business and you know downtown Toronto. Um, I've, I've, had, uh, I've had a colleague who was gay and he tended to work right into the gay community and was very very successful. Uh, but my impression is that the black community is not especially interested in wine. I would say that the the black or the African Canadian community, or if you want to even go further, uh, subdivided, you know, the Jamaican community, the Trinidad community, or the Bayesian community, or whatever, uh, there there definitely are people who are it's like another segment of the, of the population of the community uh, who are interested in wine. Um, but I just, need never see them at events. Well, that's I I think with the whole. Uh, uh, with my, I guess, the high way how, how I looked at uh, the, the whole connection of wine and food, I'm just trying to make a more broader um, uh, answer to your question. I think over the last couple of years, with the adaptation of, uh, say, food television, the food network, celebrity chefs, food pairings, wine pairings, there's been a lot of uh, energy, a lot of uh, work uh, to really break down, you know, those traditional, stereotypical uh, barriers of, you know, snobbery of wine and, and just really be more inclusive invite more people uh, to really enjoy the benefits of wine, food matching, and so forth. And as a result, you know, they're making inroads into, surf, into uh, you know, um, say, non-traditional markets where uh, the, the, uh, the, the commerce and the marketplace have never seen or haven't seen as many people come, uh, come into it. Um, for instance, you know, Rob Rayford, a good friend of mine, you know, a uh, fairly well-known celebrity chef on the Food Network, sure. um, making inroads there and, you know, yeah. um, and so forth. Um, is it is it that the rest of the wine community, shall we call them the, the, the white segment, well, what we all see, have they been non have we been non inclusive or 
or are blacks simply less interested in wine? I wouldn't is, say. Is, is that a I wouldn't taste say, thing? No, I wouldn't say as a non inclusive. I just don't think uh, perhaps young African Americans, I don't know, African Canadians never thought or never uh, perceived of this being a viable career option. Um, is it, and what's changing? What's changing that? Besides you and Rob Rainford. <laughs> uh, um, again, I think just people are just are just stretching their their you know I want to say their wings, their their curiosity to see what's out there to really expand their their horizons as to um, you know trying different things. And of course, if each generation that comes up and comes forth from 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 the previous, uh, you know, they're, they're always stretching their wings to find their own identity and build a sense of. Uh, <coughs> A personality for that, and I think as a result, um, um, I see it. I see it in you know, um, and um, food and wine shows. Um, people of color, not necessarily African Americans, but you know, um, Indian or um, mm -hmm. Asian or, or, sure. or whatever. They're they're there, and they're you know, they're like, wow, this is this is great. I mean, the fact that you know you're. You know, you're a person of color doing what you're doing, and you know, you're more than just a representative of the company. You're actually the person who's making the wine. You're helping out along with your sales team to get out there, and they're you know they're really just in charge, uh, infused and, and just charged up by that. And it's just well, it's no different than so and so working in a restaurant down the road. I mean, you know, a person might be of a, you know of a Middle Eastern type, but he's not making Middle Eastern food. He's doing French cuisine or or fusion inspired cuisine. It's just it's just our you know people. Awakening of horizons and people just want to again find their own identity and put that forth. Tell me about your um, eureka moment. What 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 drew you to this business? What drew you to the wine business and particularly to wine making? Uh, that was more or less a necessity for for part time employment during my university years uh, when I was uh, pursuing to become a, a music educator and uh, was a uh, novice. A novice uh, Musician, jazz musician, as such, I I took a part-time job with a gentleman by the name of Paul Morton, uh, who uh, had his own beer and wine place called the Brew Factory in the north of Toronto, and he was looking for someone to come in and help him out on a part-time basis, as to help out the day-to-day -day business operations, helping um, customers make their own wine, doing the sales, and so forth, and then uh, got him. Quickly fell in love with the whole process of brewing beer, but even more intrigued with making wine, and uh, knew at that point it's probably something I would like to pursue. Um, that being said, I did finish off the degree in music a few years afterwards, but I always had a, uh, a yearning to see what was what would wine making be like on the commercial end, and that opportunity was given to me uh, once I, I joined up with Southbrook Winery in the fall of 2000 and 2001, joined on as a to apprentice as part of the winemaking team, and that harvest really was um, actually, I can tell you exactly the moment where we were pressing Pinot Noir. It was like uh, hands were dirty, we're working in a small basket press, pressing the grapes, and it was covered from, you know, from head to toe with grapes and stems and seeds, and of course juice spilled from the press, and I just said, yep, this is, this is cool. This is what <laughs> this I is, want to see what I want to do, and <laughs> was quite thankful for that, but it was, um, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. But but you, 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 this is a, what you've got here is a with Narai is a virtual winery. That's so it uh, it's a brand. It is a it's, brand. It's not you know we we normally associate as I said a winery with bricks and mortar. Yet um, you chose this model. Um, can you tell me uh, since this program is called pro and con, what are the pros and cons of a virtual winery? I guess I'll start with the positive aspects. The pros are um, there isn't a, a tremendous amount of uh, outlay of cash or investment required um, to get uh, such a, a label up and going. Um, that that's contingent on a number of things, mainly um, your host winery being supportive and, and, and willing to allow uh, an employee or somebody or partner to rent space. When you say uh, your host, explain to me like like you you own the brand. Yes. You make you buy grapes, yes, but you don't have a place have to a place make them. So right. so you have to rent. We have to space. we rent space, and as as part of the agreement, uh, the brand Narai is essentially considered a second brand of the host wine that actually has the license as governed and, and, and granted by the AGCO and the. 
regulatory uh, uh, bodies here in the, in the province of Ontario and of course Canada, but more than uh, more or less in Ontario. Um, so the brand itself, Narai, is considered a second label of the host wine in my case is the Profil Wines, um, meaning um, in order for me to make the wine, I have to, in order, sorry, in order for me to make the wine, the grapes can only be purchased under a manufacturer's license and then um, the wine make itself can only be made under, again, that same license with, with a winery attached that has land and uh, a certain amount of acreage uh, planted and dedicated to the production of wine and so forth. So, um, in that sense, on the books, it's considered, Narai is considered a, a brand of the Profil Wines uh, among the AGC and the v NBQA and the provincial government. However, the day to day operations, the financing, the, the purchase of the grapes, the bottles, the labels, promotions, the winemaking is done by me. And it's the same thing with the other virtual uh, labels here in Ontario 2027 Cellars, um, Charles Baker's uh, pro project, Thomas uh, Backhouder. Um, all of them. All sure. Of them. Sure. So, as well. So, it's, um, so what it's, are the it's, it's a little, I guess that's in the way it's kind of really quite um, answer, but you no, know, I mean, that's that's kind of give you a bit of both. It's kind of both uh, pros and cons. The cons of the fact, or the negative aspect, or the difficult aspect, I guess, on the other side is uh, again we don't have our own buildings, so you know you're you're dependent on finding a host winery or the generosity of generosity to, to do that. And you've been in a number of places now. What, um, what wineries have you worked at in the, uh, with with Narai? What wineries have you actually been uh, in? The I the Narai was uh, graciously. Um, Created under the, uh, the the support of, of Calamus Estates, where I was working as their uh, um, uh, cellar master, and um, that started in 2009. And then in 2011, this past harvest, uh, we made um, arrangements and connections with uh, uh, the DeProfil family, um, better known. Uh, the winemaker there is Fred DeProfil, who's the uh, consultant winemaker at Pondview. Pondview Winery in Niagara Lake, and he, along with his father, Joe uh, DeProfil Sr., and his partner, Carolyn Dijerzan, uh, offered the opportunity to come down to the property to uh, to make Narai as such, and as well, um, offered me the very wonderful um, uh, additive of uh, having retail space there. So um, when people come into the winery, they'll see Narai sellers' uh, wines on its own shelves, and uh, we can do tasting is there as well in terms of at the tasting bar and it's, it's another added dimension which um, I've never had before so it's, it's, it's very really fresh. Who's, who's doing better right now in the retail store? The De Profil wines or the Narai wines? I would say um, it's about even. It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's almost even but definitely uh, I did the advantage, well I would say the advantage but definitely the focus is on the De Profil wines which is something I uh, and my, my partner Roddy are really encouraged because you know they're they're a new wine. The new wine. We're trying to just do our best to get people into the door to see the facility, try the wines, and, and hear their story as well. So and that's, and that's great. And I think I think your your wine would be a big draw to them because your, yours is I think the only wine that's been uh, plugged in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, far as I know, among the virtuals, I'm not sure, but um, I know we've had that um, that gracious uh, opportunity to have. Some sort of remarks on her wines in there, and it was again, it, it wasn't unsolicited. It just no. was given to us, and it was it was a wonderful opportunity. When that happened, did uh, there must have been a lot of questions from the U.S. and can we get the wine? There, we there were it? there were some questions. How does that change? How did that change your your actual sales? Um, it it didn't really change it too much. Um, there was it was just more of I guess if anything, it was more of a novel or curiosity as to okay, what's this winery? How they not have a, a actual building with their own name gracing the you know the front of it and uh, and uh, where they're doing it. How do we find about uh, purchasing the wines? Um, if anything, there was more. I, I guess in, in many respects, it was it's more of that um, traditional Canadian. I've heard um, interplay where you know in, in order for I'm not saying I'm one of them, just saying. You know, I've heard in the past, you know, in order for Canadians to become famous or well-known, they have to go out of their country. Yep. In order to get garner information or garner um, attention back home. Yep. Uh, that was more of the case that we actually got some buzz, more people back here in Ontario and across the country saying, you know, hey, what's going on there? How did you, wow. So, um, I, if anything, it really draw, it really draw more attention to the brand. What did you feel? Uh, How did you feel? It was, it, it was. It was actually. It was. It was pretty cool. I was like going. I actually, I think it was you who, 
Like, I, like it was weird. I saw the article, but I didn't make the correlation in terms of Wall Street Journal or the publisher. And I believe it was you who uh, uh, sent me an email saying congratulations on the Wall Street Journal article. I'm like, what Wall Street Journal article? I went back like, holy crap. So it was, uh, it was, it was, it was quite humbling, and it was it holy was crap. That's, that's a pretty good reaction. Holy crap! Yeah, it was. It was for sure. Let's talk about the wine. This sure. Is, this is a this is a new wine for you. Yes. It Cadence. It's called Cadence 2010. What does it sell for? Uh, this sells for 19.95. 19.95, just like um, many of your other wines. Yes. And, and same price as, as our flagship, the Sauvignon Blanc. What's the blend? The blend is 34% Syrah, 25% uh, Cab Franc, 21% Cab Sauv, and 20% Merlot. And again, this is from the 2010 vintage. And um, just to go a little bit into the wine itself. Um, just really wanted to uh, accentuate and really focus on the quality and the the, the, the indicative quality of the vintage I mean 2010. Uh, just seeing that from early on in you know, late winter, early spring until the fall, it was a very long, generous, warm growing season and uh, just saw it immediately if the year keeps up. Of course, you know, I'll keep tabs on it. If the year keeps up, I think I have to try to treat this one out a little differently. So, what I did, I uh, purposely went out and sourced uh, what they call second and third filled French oak barrels from California from a broker um, to to match rate, have the wine age, and um, wasn't look really looking forward or really wanted to have a lot of new oak uh, spice. Even though it's there, I really wanted the fruit in the end to come out and be part of the, the profile of the wine on top as opposed to having fruit, vanilla, spice, and all that mashed together. Brilliantly so. integrated. I really like it. Thank you. And it's the greatest vintage we've had to date. This, this, is, this is correct. So um, I uh, just really wanted to focus on that. And and in the process, I, I quickly realized, you know, this is how some of the great Bordeaux wines are made. Um, you know, with uh, not minus the sort. Well, some of the great Bordeaux wines were made for some sort of so, 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 Yeah, well, so <laughs> but um, just in terms of in terms of the oak treatment, you know, not necessarily looking at really new, powerful oak, but it's more the oak to give a, 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 a founding cell, a foundation of support underneath to to push the fruit up. And um, yes, we're, we're quite happy with this wine. And, no, I like the fact that it's not over oak. Too many Ontario wines I find are over oak, and this really does allow the fruit to, 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 to come forward with, with good support. Um, where is it available or when? It's now available. It's now available it. now. It's available at the Profile Wines or um, we are putting this up on our website. It'll be up on our website shortly. And your well. website is www.naraisellers.ca or .com. And, um, and we'll put the correct spelling on of Narai Sellers at the end on the, on the credits there. Um, tell me about what's going on now, the newest vintage, the latest, 2012. We've had a summer of extreme heat, <laughs> more 30, 30 degree days than I recall, but in the last eight, nine days, it's all been rain. It's all been rain. It's, rain. Uh, it's, uh, our, as it's, it's obviously it's slowed down the grapes. We're it's, weeks it's ahead. And we're, we, we are weeks ahead. Are um, we still weeks ahead? I think we're probably at least uneducated, I guess I'd say between 7 to 15 days probably in terms of a week, week and a half uh, ahead. Um, some of the concerns, at least on the, on, on the bench where, you know, where we work, and Norada, uh, a lot of the concerns were um, perhaps in the great lines at some point would start to shut down. And there's, some, there's been some signs of just some of the leaves turning a little, a little, a little yellow, uh, stunted growth. Um, the rain will definitely help just to recharge those. Those, those vineyards, but the grape vines themselves are uh, resilient. Uh, little buggers, which, which you know they, they will take care of themselves for the most part. But um, we're hoping that um, Ontario, being known to have you know quite drastic weather conditions from midsummer to late summer to early early, early, uh, early fall, we're hoping that you know we don't get any of those turnt rains that usually associate from uh, hurricane season. We've had some uh, hail in Lake Erie North Shore. Has there been anything like that in Niagara Peninsula? I have not seen myself anyhow. I know there's been some um, instances, but not necessarily within, you know, the vineyards. But that, um, that's always that's always an ongoing concern, especially when they're calling for high, humid, hot days with the possibility of, of thunderstorms. That's you know, that's always say, okay, keep our let's keep our fingers crossed and eyes open. So, yes, and that's both. <laughs> yes, exactly. Both. That's fantastic. Well, the wine is now available. 
for twenty dollars, nineteen ninety five, at the Profil Wines and through the website. And uh, I, having tasted it for the first time, highly recommend it. It's brilliant. I, I, I'm scoring this at at least ninety, and, and I might go a little higher later on once I've studied it. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Was it was a pleasure talking, and uh, the opportunity to uh, explain what we're doing in Orion and what we uh, hope to uh, to work towards. Well, I hope you achieve all your dreams. Thank you. Thanks again. Thanks a lot. See you next time.